Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Everlasting Faith Fellowship uh, on our live broadcast here on YouTube. And uh, today we're going to talk about committing to God's call, part of our uh, Journey of Faith series, committing to God's call. You know, people make a lot of commitments to different things, right? They make commitments to their spouses if they're married, their girlfriends or boyfriends, uh, their jobs, their social clubs, their sports teams, uh, <clears throat> their computer games, and sometimes, yes, even bird watching. And a whole lot of other things that sometimes are very insignificant. <clears throat> and some people are very committed to sometimes things that are really trivial, right? And I think it, I use that word trivial when you compare it to what God calls us to do, amen? <clears throat> now, God expects every Christian not only to hear his call, but to commit to his call of faith and act on it, do something about it. Now, who and what we commit to really speaks volumes about what kind of people we are, right? I think it's a testimony um, as to what type of faith we have or we do not have. Now, last week we uh, began that new series entitled Journey of Faith, and <clears throat> it was about what it means to take a, a journey of faith by looking at one of the most faithful men in the Bible, and that is Abraham. Abraham. <clears throat> and last week we learned that he did everything that was necessary to hear from God about what his journey of faith was to be. <clears throat> so this week, now that he knows what he's supposed to do, we're going to learn what it really means to be committed to that journey of faith that God calls us to. So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 12, beginning in verse 4. It says, Abraham departed <clears throat> as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. It says, Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Verse 5, he took his wife, as we spoke about last week, Sari, and his, the person Lot was his nephew, <clears throat> and all of his wealth and livestock he took, and also all the people... <clears throat> that were in his household at Haran, and he headed for the land of Canaan as the Lord had instructed him. <clears throat> now there's three specific commitments of faith that we're going to learn about from this passage today. The first is a commitment to trust and obey. Trust and obey. Now, I'll tell you a, a story to illustrate this about a Texas pastor <clears throat> named Jim Dennison, and he was in college at the time. He served as a summer missionary in East Malaysia. And while he was there, he attended a small church out in Malaysia. And at one of the church worship services, a teenage girl came forward to announce her decision to follow Christ and be baptized. And during the service, uh, Dennison noticed some worn out luggage that was against the wall of the church. So then later on, he asked the, the local pastor about it, <clears throat> and the pastor pointed to the girl who had just <clears throat> been baptized, and, and he told Dennison, the reason she did that is because her father said <clears throat> if she was baptized as a Christian, she could never go home again, so the girl brought her luggage with her. You see, God called this young lady to lay it all on the line, and that's exactly what she did. God called Abram to lay it all on the line, and that's exactly what he did. And God also calls each one of us, right, who he knows will be committed to him, to trust in him and do the same thing, to obey his call. So the issue here is not what we want, not what we think, right? Not what we assume would be the best for us. And you know what that word assume means, make us something out of you and me. No, it's what God wants us to do and he knows what's best for us to do. And once we know what he's calling us to do, then we need to do something else and that's to commit to what he's asking us to do. So 
Let's commit to the following when it comes to trusting and obeying God's call. Okay, so we trust and obey no matter where God calls us to go. No matter where. <clears throat> Do you think Abram really wanted to pack up his bags and, and leave his home, right, his land, that, to go someplace he didn't know anything about? Probably not really, right? <clears throat> but that's exactly what he did because he had determined that he trusted God enough to obey him and because he knew God would always do the right thing and keep him safe. So the same thing then needs to be true of all of us. Maybe God is calling some of you to move to a place you're unsure of. Or maybe go to a group of people that are outside your comfort zone. Or maybe he's calling you just to stay right where you are and do something for him. Or maybe even move to another location that you hate or don't like, right? But whatever the call, if we truly trust God, we're going to obey him no matter what he calls us to do, amen? So we trust and obey him no matter what he calls us to do. Now, at this point in Abram's life, he doesn't really know the details of what God's calling him to do, but he does know that he's supposed to go and do it. So he does it, and we need to be like Abram. Simply do what we know that God wants us to do until he shows us to do something differently. And I know my own experience with God's call. I was working in the medical field when I first went into the job type thing, right? Out of school and college. And uh, when I first came to Christ as a young adult, that's where I was working. And I had no idea of where anything about God calling me to do anything. But then one day he called me to go into something different than I was doing. He called me to go into law enforcement. Why? Because to help others, not just to catch others, but to protect others, to help other people. So I live my life as a Christian in a secular workplace. And that happened when he changed me to go to other jobs. So really, whatever job you're at, you should do it the best you can because there's a reason you're in that job. And while you're there, you're actually representing not just yourself, but you're representing God who you believe and trust in. So, just like me, you'll probably be called to different places, maybe different careers. And he did that, and then he finally called me into his ministry. So when we talk about God's call, it's not limited to working for a church or going into the mission field. It can be doing your everyday things. It could be a calling to minister to children in your neighborhood or work with senior citizens, or to volunteer with AIDS patients, or a thousand other things. Maybe even if you're into the internet and you're a gamer, let's say. Maybe just to be his representative on the internet. Maybe tell your story to somebody who might be thousands of miles away. The point is, is we need to be willing to do whatever God calls us to do, whether it's our first choice or not. We trust and obey no matter how many obstacles may be in our way. It kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Trust and obey no matter how many obstacles may be in our way. Now, when God called Abram, Abram could have said, uh, Yo, God, I, I don't understand. All, all my family lives here. Why do you want me to move? We, we put down roots here, and now you're asking me to go someplace? I'm 75 years old, Abram said. But Abram didn't do that, did he? Even though the obstacles in his way were probably much greater than the ones that will be in our way. You know, it's a call that's sometimes hard to follow. When God called me to do, go into the ministry, it was like, what, leave my, my job that I get paid every week to go into a job that had no salary? How was I going to make it, right? Everybody got bills to pay and you need some income, right? But we follow God's word. Didn't even consider how many obstacles were going to be in our way because we knew God was calling us to do that. But guess what? He worked it out. He worked it out. 
You can all come up with a lot of excuses as to why we're not acting in faith when, when God's making that call, right? But those excuses become pretty meaningless if we compare them to what Jesus has done for us, right? He was called to go and die for us on Calvary's cross. I don't think we're going to get a call any worse than that. So if for no other reason we should be willing to do what God asks us to do regardless of the obstacles, simply out of what? Gratitude for what he's done for us. The next commitment we're going to learn about is a commitment to yield to God's will. Think about it. When we're in traffic, right, and we yield, we're restraining our desire to move our car forward, but let somebody else who has the right of way move in front of us, right? And when we yield to God's will, we're restraining our desire to do our own thing, right, by allowing God's desires to reign supreme in our lives. Do you think that Abram had any goals, desires, or, or plans of his own before God told him to pack up and leave? I'm sure he did, right? We all do. But all of those things became secondary when he acted in faith and committed himself to following God's will for his own life. So there's several things we need to understand about yielding to God's will. First of all, yielding precedes success. We can't be successful unless we first yield first, right? Let's go to the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 3. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from who? From God. Hmm. Before God is going to use us, we need to recognize and accept the fact that until we submit our will to his will, amen, we're not going to be able to accomplish what he's asked us to accomplish. We can't do it on our own. We can't expect to be successful in Christian life until we've been submissive to our spiritual life. What does yielding do? It recognizes God's greatness, not ours. We're yielding to something greater than us. Just like when we yield in traffic to that big trailer truck that's coming, that's greater than our little car, so we're going to yield to it, right? Or if a train is coming down the tracks and we're getting ready to go across, we're going to yield to something that's greater than us. That's how we do in our spiritual life. We yield to God who is greater than us. It comes down to who we put our faith in. Do we place it in ourselves and our own abilities, or do we place it in God who can perform miraculous things, right? Yielding to God means many things. But at the very core, it's really an act of worship. You're worshiping him. By placing my life in his hands, I'm acknowledging that he's worthy of my submission. I'm not going to submit to somebody who's not worthy. I'm saying that, God, God, I recognize that your call of faith for me is the right one to do even though I may not understand it right now. What else does yielding do? It places all of us on the same level. When you yield your life to God, and I yield my life to God, and the person next to you does, we find ourselves on what they call a level playing field, all people acknowledging that God's plan is the one that's the best one to follow. Wow, if you thought about it, if every person in every church yielded to the will of God, right, and accepted his plan for them, wow, a lot of wonderful things would be happening, right? No more church splits, right? Never another major disagreement. Never another power play or political maneuver. Because we would all recognize our role as servants to the great master, amen, and that would change our entire perspective on each other on God's church, and on God's will. So today's question is, are you ready to yield? And if not, what's holding you back, right? The next thing we're going to look at is a commitment to live confidently, with confidence, right? Nobody wants to live without being confident. When Abram left his homeland, he did so in the complete confidence that he was doing 
the right thing. He was doing it at the right time, right? And he was doing it for the right reason. Imagine living the kind of life where you never had a doubt if you were doing what God wanted you to do. I think it would give you a confidence that you could never find anyplace else. So when we accept God's call of faith, right, and we act upon it, not just listen to it, we can live the same kind of confidence that Abram had. When we accept God's call to faith and act upon it, we also know something else, right? We know our eternal destiny. We know our eternal destiny. If you're a Christian, right, you've got to know that you're going to spend eternity with God. If you don't know that, you really should know it, amen, because when I know what my future holds, guess what? I'm able to deal with the present a lot easier because I know what the end result's going to be. Hebrews 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 8 says, It was by faith that Abram obeyed God when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. He didn't know where he was going. Right? Verse 9, And even when he reached the land God promised him. He lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. He got there. Of course, he had no house or anything. He had to just make do, right? And so he did, and so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Look at verse 10. Abraham was confident, confidently, there's the word, looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. So if you notice that every single thing that Abram did by faith was done, why? Because he knew of a better future that God had in store or planned for him. If we don't believe God's promises about our future are true, why are we going to trust in them, right? If I believe a person who is the most confident in God's promise of an eternity is also a person who will be the most faithful, right? That's what we should do. If we believe his promise, we should be faithful and do what he says so that we will get what he promises. John 5 and 24. I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have what? eternal life. Wow. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. Do you believe that promise? That was Jesus speaking, by the way. If you do believe it, then you're well on your way to living the life of confidence that's necessary to living a life or a faithful life, a life in faith. When we accept God's call to faith and act upon it, we know for sure that we're doing something, that we're walking with God. Who else is a better person to walk with? Every step that Abram took in the direction God pointed him was another step that he walked with God right alongside him. Brothers and sisters, the same can be said of us. When we listen to God's call and we act upon it, Every step we take from that point on is which God is right there beside us. We should have no problem knowing that he's with us every step. He's empowering every step. He's renewing us along the way. And he's given us the ability to continue in that journey of faith. What happens then? Our confidence continues to increase. And over time, we'll forget what it was like before we began our journey because we're doing some great stuff now. We find that our will and God's will are one in the same, one in the same. Now, last week, I asked everyone to begin to listen for God's call of faith, right? Hopefully, a lot of us have heard 
a word from God. What's God calling you to do? Maybe he's calling you to a ministry. What does he want you to be engaged in? Where does he want you to go? Or maybe just stay where you are. You should know the answer to that. And if you don't, just keep on praying and keep on listening. Take the wax out of your ears. And then when you do hear it, do something about it. Do something about it. The time is coming when it will be crystal clear, but you may cloud your eyes because you really don't want to do it. You may cloud your ears because you really don't want to hear it. But for those who already know, it's time to act in the ways that we describe. We have to make a commitment to trust and obey. Yielding comes before success, right? Yielding comes before success. Yielding does what? Recognize God's greatness. And yielding places us on the same level. We need to make a commitment to yield to God's will. No matter where God asks you to go, right? Make a commitment. Make a commitment to live in confidence. Know you're walking with God. Know your eternal destiny, right? But hold on. Hold it a second. If you don't know, if you don't know Christ in the first place, right? How are you going to make a commitment to him? Ask him to come into your life. Let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord, that you are with us every step of the way. We thank you that you have something in store for us to do. And even though we don't know what it is or what it, where we're going to go with it, we do know this, that no matter what you call us to do, you've already equipped us to give us the confidence to do whatever it is that you call us to do. And we thank you, Lord, for walking with us. You didn't send us someplace to go out on our own. You said that you would be with us every step of the way. And we thank you, Lord, because we know we couldn't do it without you. We're not walking alone when you ask us to do something. We're walking with you, Lord. And we thank you so much for your power, for your understanding, for your knowledge, for your commitment to each one of us. But help us to make that same commitment unto you, Lord. And we pray that those who are listening today, wherever they may be listening to this broadcast, that if they don't know you as Lord and Savior of their lives, that they would go to you in prayer right now and ask you to forgive them of their sins, ask you to come into their lives and be Lord and Savior over everything they do. And for those of us who have already done that, Lord, help us to listen and open our ears up to what you're calling us to do and help us to make a commitment to actually do what you've asked us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's service and we look forward to hearing from each and every one of you uh, once again and please send us an email the address is on the web uh, if you enjoyed the service or if you have any questions and we look forward to speaking with you next week god bless you